Hey, what is up awesome people? Shady Wags here. And in the last Worlds of Drift video, I went over how to build your first sailing ship. And that ship would allow you to get to other islands to collect more knowledge. Once you've collected more knowledge, you're going to want to begin leveling up additional ship building skills. And the first one I would recommend is engines. Having engines on your ship are going to allow you to get to other islands quicker. It's going to speed up your collection of even more knowledge. Engines allow you to get through the zone walls and they're just pretty damn cool. Engine building does require 250 knowledge, so I would save your points and I wouldn't spend them on anything else until you get those 250. Once you've collected that 250 knowledge, click on the engines upgrade icon and you're going to acquire the ability to craft the power generator and you're also going to receive an engine schematic in your inventory. Go ahead and right click on that engine schematic and select learn. And now if we go to the assembly station, the power generator and the engine are going to be available for you to craft. There are four tiers of engine crafting, common, uncommon, rare, and exotic. And each time you spend additional knowledge in a tier, you're going to unlock an additional engine schematic. You'll need to craft a total of four engines in that tier to level up to the next tier. The schematics you receive in that tier is random. It could be a really good engine or it might not be that great. In this instance, the very first uncommon schematic I received was a really good engine. But on other characters I played, I leveled up uncommon four times and didn't get anything close to being this good. The first thing I'm going to craft is the power generator, which is essentially the fuel tank. The casing of the tank is the tank's hit points, and the type of material you use will affect the overall hit points of the item, as well as the weight of the item, and once you place that on the ship, the weight of the ship. So strong materials like iron and nickel are going to provide more protection, but they're going to increase your weight. Also, using higher quality mats are going to provide a bigger boost to ship part performance. So if you use quality 8 nickel, that's going to give you more hit points than using quality 1 nickel. This is true in all items in Worlds of Drift. The type and the quality of the mats are going to affect the overall performance of that ship part. Now, if you're using wood as your casing, that's going to decrease the weight of your ship, but it's going to provide less hit points. Another thing to take into consideration when choosing material for the casing is if the casing is taking damage, whether that's from another player damaging it or by the elements, once the casing is gone, the part's going to fall off the ship. And in the case of fuel tanks, if they take damage and fall off your ship, then you have no way to provide fuel to your engines. And if you don't have any way to power the engines and you don't have a sail, well, you're stranded. So the casing is the most important part of an item's makeup. You also want to factor in repairs though. You can make an item's case out of the strongest materials like titanium or tungsten, and they're going to be strong, but if they take damage and you don't have any titanium or tungsten on you, well, then you're not going to be able to repair that item. Once you've crafted the fuel tank, you can place it anywhere on the ship that has a deck. It doesn't have to be connected in any way to the engines. As long as it's attached to the ship, it will fuel all the engines that are attached to the ship. Okay, let's go ahead and craft an engine now. There are four parts to an engine, and what materials you use are also going to affect the overall effectiveness of the engine. The casing, again, this is the hit points of the engine. Once the casing's hit points are depleted, that engine will fall off the ship. So generally, you want the casing to be a strong material, but relatively light, like iron or nickel. For combustion internals, you're going to receive the biggest benefit when using heat-resistant metals like nickel, iron, or titanium. Mechanical internals are going to receive the largest percentage boost, again, when using nickel, iron, or titanium. And the propeller should be crafted using a relatively strong material. If you're using metal, steel, aluminum, or copper are good. The engines also have five stats. Resilience, which is directly affected by the material that you're using for the casing. Fuel efficiency, which is the rate of fuel consumption. The higher this value is, the less fuel that's going to be consumed during flight. And this stat is affected by the material that you use for the combustion internals. Overheat limit is not yet implemented in the game. Power directly affects a ship's maximum velocity. The heavier a ship is, the more power that you're going to need to reach that velocity. And spin up affects the time it takes for the engine to reach that power level. I know that's a lot to take in, in the beginning. I wouldn't overthink this or spend a lot of time on it. Just use the mats that you have available to you right now in the beginning, like iron or nickel. 
knob crafted the engine i'm going to go ahead and place that on my ship if you are running only one engine you would want to place that on top because if you place it on the side then it would pull your ship to one side if you're running two engines you want to use the same type of engines and craft them with the same type of quality materials or at least close if you craft one engine with all high quality mats and another with low quality mats the high quality engine is going to produce more power and it's going to pull your ship slightly to one side you can check the stats and the mats that was used to craft an item just by scanning it so now we have our engines on i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to collect some fuel i would recommend dragging the fuel to your belt there's always the chance that you're going to die up in the air and you don't want to lose your fuel or you could end up stranded now that I have some fuel, I'm going to go ahead and interact with the tank by hitting E and that will fill the tank up and we are ready to go. So I'll interact with the helm, hit spacebar to use the atlas core to raise up over any obstacles. Then when I push W on the keyboard, it will increase the throttle on the ship, engage the engines and now I'm moving forward. Pushing W again will give the ship more throttle and pushing S will decrease the throttle. Red is neutral, and if we keep pushing S to decrease the throttle, the ship can now go in reverse. You will notice though when I pull back or push forward on the flight stick, it's not real responsive, and that's because we don't have any wings on the ship yet. So eventually, you might want to spend knowledge to learn wings and wing building. You don't necessarily have to though. As you explore, you're going to find schematics, and in this case, I did find a wing schematic pretty early, and I was able to learn that without spending the $100 to unlock wing crafting. If you're a solo player, it is going to be very difficult to level up everything, especially engines, because it does take a lot of knowledge points as you increase in tiers. Wings follow the same formula as engine building. The more points you invest, the higher tiers you're going to open up, and the better schematics you're going to get. Wings have three parts, the casing, the mechanical internals, and the Allerion. Again, just like the engine, the casing is the wings hit points. Stronger materials provide more hit points and weight, while lighter mats, the opposite. For the mechanical internals, you're going to get the best performance boost by using aluminum, tin, or copper. And for the Allerion, palm, ash, or oak. Wings have three stats. Resilience, this is the hit points of the wing, and that's going to be provided by the wing's casing. Power in wings is not the same as engine power. In wings, it determines how fast you're able to turn your ship. A power of 100 can turn your ship much faster than a power of 1. And the last thing we have is pivot speed. This refers to how fast the wing reacts to your steering inputs. So with a level 100, the ship would start turning instantly, where if it was 1, it would take a few seconds before it would react. Placement of the wings is really important. You want to keep the wing placement symmetrical. Unsymmetrically placed wings could pull the ship to one side. Now, if you place the wings horizontal when you use the flight stick, you're going to see that it's much more responsive when you pitch up or downwards or when you roll the ship left or right. If you place a wing on the top of your ship vertical, that is going to help you rotate left or right, like a rudder. And I highly recommend having one of these because it makes maneuvering your ship a lot easier. If you place the wings at a 45 degree angle, what you will do is you'll get the benefits of both placing the wings horizontal and vertical, but at a 50% less effectiveness. And also what I'm going to do is in the description, I'm going to place a link to a forum discussion where they've listed what materials give the best percentage boost per an item. So that takes a little bit of the guesswork out of it. And that's actually what I've been using. So you might want to go check that out. So guys, that is it for engines and wings. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, have a good one. Later. Yeah, Shady Wags got your back, it's so entertaining, you need to subscribe to got your back, gaming, gameplay, and reviews, even doing walkthroughs, this the best gaming channel, I'm just telling you the truth, PS4, Xbox One, or even PC, plenty tips, all the tricks, this is just what you need.